All right, we're going to finish a Lighthouse Bookmarks stamp sketch here. Um, I had a customer just do a really cool looking um, photo stamping of a lighthouse scenario with some um, crepuscular rays coming down from the sky that they took while on vacation. And um, she was talking about um, highlighting of the rocks, okay? And she was applying some outlines down here, but I want to show her um, in a video form um, what some bleed proof white can do down here um, with a splatter painting technique and just how to apply some um, highlights down in these splashing wave areas. In the imagery you can see all these kind of splashing um, rock types of uh, or splashing waves types of uh, uh, textures against those dark rocks and those are the things that we can utilize our white pen on and or our splatter painting technique. So I uh, just happened to have this uh, bookmark here um, utilizing those images and I had a little bit of time here so I thought I would finish that off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize um, a color scheme like this. I haven't used these before like this but I'm just mixing and matching. I'm going to go for kind of a sunsetty warm toned color scheme. Hello, Sandy. Hello, Diana. How are you today? <laughs> I'm just doing a really quick uh, um, finish to this bookmark here. And uh, I'm trying to figure out some kind of color scheme utilizing uh, anything but the Marvy inks, but I think I am going to have to supplement. So hello, Beth. Hello, Beverly. Good to see you. Um, yeah, uh, thanks for joining in. I, I didn't know if anyone would be around here on Mother's Day weekend. Happy Mother's Days to any mothers out there, to anyone that nurtures, etc. Mothers to your art, mothers to what are pets and animals, etc. Um, yeah, but let's try, let's, let's go through kind of a color scheme like this. I don't know what this is going to look like. Like I said, I haven't tried this combination before. Hello, Beth. Hope everyone's having a good uh, weekend so far. Everyone, uh, are you finding some crafting time in there? Some relaxation time. Hello, Lynn. Actually, there's a hello, Lynn. Both Lynns. <laughs> All right. All right, if you're just joining in here, just a quick finish on this stamp sketch here, just done in mono, 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 monotone and monochromatically. And it was for the stamp sketch video live stream. I don't know when it was, a couple weeks ago or something like that. Hello, Virginia. All right, let's give this a shot here. This uh, piece of paper here, this bookmark was just a piece of scrap paper and uh, it is the Mohawk Everyday Digital White Coated Silk. So if you haven't seen my videos before, this is just some paper that I found at Kelly Paper walking around their aisles. And I, I like matte paper, okay? But I typically like, I like papers that are a little bit coated. So over the years, there's been, um, some different papers that I've used and they go by the name of, oh, things like silk, satin, um, dull, okay. And um, they are slightly coated, okay. They're typically not very glossy or anything like that. Uh, you can tell a little bit of a difference between these and matte, though. They just have a little bit of sheen to them, okay? And uh, there's all kinds of them out there, okay? there You, you can type in something like um, a semi-gloss or something like that, you know? But they're much, much closer, typically, to a matte than anything glossy, okay? It's, it's not like in the middle. It's much more close to... Uh, 
uh, mat than anything from what I've found, you know, um, over the years. So it, I think it's just one of those industry standard things, you know, if you want a little bit of coating to something, you know, for kind of ink and uh, vibrancy retention. Uh, yeah, you can find it, Candy. Um, I found it on one website out there. Um, I think I have a link to it in our information section in the accessory, off-site accessories link. Good evening, CM Hawkins. Good to see you. Um, let's see. Glad you're milking Mother's Day weekend, Beverly. I wish it was a three-day weekend. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm toning in here, and if you can tell, I have retained a little bit of the white. I didn't retain too much of it because I want to make this one pretty saturated, but these little areas down in here that are the white of the paper, those are going to be really important, okay? So as long as you retain some of that little white down there, when I apply the bleed proof white and the white embellishments, that white right in there um, is reflective of kind of a white light hitting this um, scene and these areas reflecting that same color of light, okay? So if you're gonna use white as um, I don't know, some sort of reflected um, lighting within your scene, be it white paint pens. I like to use pigment inks, things like the uh, bleed proof white, then retain some white, okay? It, it, people often, you know, it, it's easy for people to do. And what I find is that um, they do it in the first color, but if there's any kind of danger of losing that white, it's usually in kind of the middle, the mid-tones, um, the third or fourth color that they apply. Um, yeah, I, I do, Lynn. Um, the one that, okay, now this is on kind of more of a matte-ish paper, so if you like that type of kind of matte satiny finish, I know this is out of focus, but I'm just showing you so that you can see it's not very glossy. You know, it's like this color, right? Or this sheen to it. I often like to use kind of more of a matte spray on this to um, kind of retain that characteristic. I mean, it looks good if you spray it in glossy too. It typically doesn't look so glossy. I guess if you gave it five coats, it would look really glossy. But um, the thing that I use quite often is the UV resistant clear and um, it comes in glossy or matte. Um, I don't see the matte one of this too often, so um, you can order it though, but um, what I usually find is that uh, the workable fixatives work fine to retain, to coat, and to retain that um, inherent characteristic of this type of paper, so you know, it just depends on what you're going for. Um, as I've mentioned in previous videos, uh, people have used um, hairsprays in a pinch or something like that. You know, if you just don't have anything and you really want to seal things off and to uh, kind of protect it a little bit, you know, that's, I mean, that's a good way to go to. I always mention to people, hey, you know, um, these pieces, if it yellows in 20 years or something like that from hairspray, I, you know, I don't, for my pieces, I don't really care. You know, I'm not... Uh, trying to, you know, create something that's like super archival or anything like that. I don't know. I mean, if it does yellow, I don't think it's going to look like... I don't know if you'd really be able to notice it, though. Um, at least in this type of application here. All right, I'm going with desert sand here. I don't think I can see anything at all. You know? <laughs> this, no, okay, it is getting a little bit darker. All right. This scene's going to come together really fast. Um, what I was mentioning is that um, earlier, I think before anyone logged on, is that um, a customer of mine did a, a photo stamping um, piece of a uh, photograph they took in, uh, oh, it was Cozumel, I think, uh, Mexico. And there's the looking at it sea, and then there's 
kind of a overcast day with clouds um, and there's a lot of those crepuscular rays coming down you know these light beams so she utilized that to try out her first I think photo I think her first photo stamping and um, she had uh, used her white pen to um, outline some of her rocks but they look too outlined okay but I'll show you I, I wanted to show her um, or have a video to reference for her that shows how to utilize um, kind of white um, highlights in this type of scenario right here okay so you have a lot of crashing waves so it's really fun to splatter paint some additional white down here okay it's already in the design itself I've created a lot of little splashing white highlights against those rocks but inevitably if you want to add in some of these tones like this and to make this scene really rich then those white dots became you know mustard seed yellow and pink and whatever in here so you get that splashing look but if you want to go back and kind of reintroduce the the um the contrast of white in those areas then you can do it with your white pen or the splatter painting again so you have kind of a layer of depth in splashes within the given space so that's what i'm always into i like creating a lot of depth um, wherever possible in a piece and it could be something really subtle like some little white dots down in this area right down in that space and it just makes it really dynamic and who doesn't like splatter painting and i think that's why we do it like in kindergarten or something like that you know do that splatter painting technique and as a matter of fact i think before i started stamping and doing that technique on my cards i think the last time i did splatter painting was probably kindergarten okay all right so um there's the pink right there okay and pink overlapping um yellow doesn't look pink it looks orange because these colors are all transparent right all right so let's go to this one right here potter's clay i'm just using i just picked out this color scheme because i had them in uh, in the mementos i don't use some of these colors of memento too often so i thought eh, let's just give it a try here and take a look and see what it looks like sometimes it's really good you know we get we can get caught in um using the same color schemes a lot and uh, I do that you know you find color combinations that really work for you and it's easy to get locked into them I mean if you like them yeah you should use them but once in a while you should kind of kind of break out of the the pattern a little bit or just tweak it you can add additional tones to it or just use different combinations you know and um, I don't know you can I don't know some come you can get surprised at um, I don't know new aesthetic new preferences whatever and it's always good to just kind of play around um, with um, whatever your set types of uh, formulas that you come up with <laughs> in school um, we'd often call it um, kind of using um, kind of set formulas that we've developed as a crutch so you know uh, you never wanted to do that you don't want to kind of utilize things as a crutch they call it so branch out experiment okay this is sweet plum here i don't i haven't used that one in a long time it could just be that it's at, you know it was at like the bottom of the pile or something like that I always like all these memento inks though uh, the memento inks they're really thick so they really blend with other colors really nicely um, but sometimes the mementos I don't know do you find that is anyone use mementos or a lot of tones like especially on glossy cardstock hello Cheryl um, they can dry kind of dull okay now you just spray it you know like Lynn was asking about you know do you spray it I always say spray sealing is the great equalizer for all the different types of brands of inks and 
ink surface combination um, issues that might come up. The biggest thing is um, kind of drying dull and you can um, spray seal it and it protects and everything like that, but it really can, can um, kind of impact the vibrancy and saturation of all those inks, especially if you're doing something like this where you're really layering a lot of colors, okay? We don't want it to dry flat, okay, and dull looking. So you just spray seal it and it can usually um, bring back the uh, appearance of a wet, freshly um, stamped piece, okay? Or color applied piece, I should say. All right, this was Rich Cocoa. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, but okay, let's let's really kick this up. I've I've done this right here, and these colors right here. Now I haven't used these this particular combination before like that. Okay, but this to me. It looks like the same color scheme that I've seen when I've used, like, say, Marvies or something like that. So, all you have to do is just kind of throw in some additional tones into the mix. I tell you what, let me use... I was talking with someone about um, one of their pieces. I forgot what the subject was, but I think she was having trouble. Maybe it was something where something was... There was some color that was so loud, and I took a look at it her finished piece, and I said, that's number 20 magenta, isn't it? And she goes, yeah. This one right here, this Marvy magenta, is just so intense. Hello, Cindy. Hello, Sherry. Honey. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, this ink right here is just so vibrant and hot, okay? You kind of have to kind of be a little bit uh, careful about it, especially if you just go straight from the pad right onto there, if if the pad is like super juicy too, okay? Now it looks like my pad is a little bit dry because I probably haven't re-inked it in, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if I haven't re-inked this in six years. I don't use it too often, but see that right there? Look at that vibrancy up there. I'm looking at it on, on the camera here. Uh, why you're using silk paper now instead of glossy? I'm not, Candy. I use glossy for glossy scenes, and I use silk for silk scenes, you know? It's not one or the other when it comes to media. Like, if I start using colored pencils, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to use dye-based inks anymore or something like that. You know? I don't know. It's not an either-or, but it's just kind of, you know, expansion. It's just like what I'm talking about here with the inks, you know? play around with some different combinations, play around with different surfaces. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't I don't know about you guys, but I, I like variety, okay? Now, there's certain types of aesthetics with glossy paper for sure, okay? If you want the most um, amount of color range and intensity, glossy paper is by far the way to go, okay? It has its own aesthetic. That's why people use it for, printers use it for impact. Posters are often printed on glossy cardstock, book book covers, business cards, flyers. They get, there's the most amount of um, ink retention on the surface. It's not getting absorbed into the surface, okay? So that's why they would use something like that, okay? But there's also other types of books that, um, you know, might be kind of have a satin feel or something like that. Um, for a certain type of look or for a certain type of aesthetic and uh, Yeah, I don't know. It just depends on what you're going after um, But if you want the most amount of variety and the most amount of um, potential impact from your media um, In terms of the media that's compatible with glossy cardstock That's your main bet right there, but I can't get a satin look and I can't get a matte look out of glossy Okay, I don't know. I've never tried to spray seal like a glossy cardstock though with a matte finish that'd be kind of interesting you can make matte finishes glossy but can you make a glossy finish matte by spray sealing with a matte i don't know hello deborah good to see you we met at a stamp show and you are still my very favorite stamp artist ah that's the way it should be <laughs> i'm just joking but yeah what what stamp show was that deborah 
uh, what what convention? I miss conventions, by the way, everyone. Has everyone been to a convention before? Those are always fun times. Ruben C. <laughs> Ruben C. Speaking of shows, if you've ever been to a show uh, convention, there's Ruben. He probably rung you up at the register. Let's see. I don't know. What years was that from, Ruben? Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's Ruben's, uh, that was Ruben's observation uh, of uh, his relations uh, with women. The happiest he's ever made a woman is when he sold her st <laughs> stamps. And uh, Ruben was a classmate of mine at uh, Long Beach State out of the illustration program. And at one convention, <laughs> someone asked if he was my dad. We're not even the same race and we're the same, like the same age. It's the authority kind of, uh, you know, presence you have, Reuben. Mesa, Arizona. Yeah, great. Now, okay, so that was, uh, was that just a few years ago, uh, Deborah? At one of those shows, when I was with, uh, um... Rubber Stamping Depot? Well, it would have to be, yeah. I think the other shows that we did in Arizona were a long time ago in... Where was, Ruben, where was that that uh, that other city that we did that show where we checked out the, uh, the, uh, the baseball game? It was... Uh, not Flagstaff. It, eh, I can't remember that other, where that other convention uh, was held years ago. Are you a full-time artist or do you have other talents too? Uh, I don't know. I, well, I don't know. I, the other things that I do are, you know, run stampscapes. So most of that is not anything to do with art. It's like shipping and, you know, website, and all that type of stuff. So, yeah, I have other hobbies. Uh, well, that's true. You're a one year older. Well, I guess that may, that, so then that you can be, you could be my dad then, Ruben. <laughs> Hello, Jason. Good to see you again. Because of the, of, of Loom setup. What's Loom setup there? Zoom? Wait, oh, I don't remember. Colin met my sister-in-law and I meet at Colin. Oh. The Collinsville rubber stamp events show every layer. Ah, always fun things. It's fun because we. Uh... No, you did there. You did Arizona, Ruben. That other, uh, that other show that we did there. Uh, Scottsdale, yeah, Scottsdale. We ate at. Uh, uh, I can't remember where we ate, but yeah, Scottsdale a couple times. Oh. Debra, okay, well, I, that might have been Scottsdale then, I think, Debra, if it was in Arizona, because we did Scottsdale, like, a couple times, and it wasn't, uh, oh, I did it one, I, I did it a couple times, and then, I think we didn't do it for a while, then we went back there, I don't know, might have been five years after that, or something like that. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not a professor. I did teach it one t one year at, uh, or one semester at uh, the Laguna College of Art and Design. I think, yeah. Illustration. <laughs> oh, weaving loom. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, Scott still, of course, Ruben. Uh, yeah. Let me see. So we used to do, uh, let's see. We used to do the Carson shows, Carson, California. 
um, Scottsdale, Cincinnati, Akron, Ohio, Texas, uh, the Grapevine shows with Heirloom. There's the San Jose shows over the years. Um, where else? I've done Riverside before. Um, Denver once. Um, Massachusetts. Uh, what else? Anyways, I'm not even talking about the scene here, but uh, <laughs> you see where this kind of went there with the uh, with the magenta there. I mean, it just gives it a different tone, and then I'm kind of framing off the scene with a really strong vignette there. Okay, and I can't get into that lighthouse with this. I mean, I could, I guess, you know, and just kind of wipe it like that, but I'm just going to find it easier just to use my pens to get into that area, and I'll use some alcohol pens. In year, you know, 20, 30 years ago, we would have been going into that with like a Tombow or a La Plume. But these days, you know, it's all about um, alcohol pens. Um, I don't know. I, I guess people still have the Tombos and the Plumes and things like that, the double-sided ones. But um, yeah, Washington State was the Puyallup show. Um, uh, no, I do. I give out samples. I, I typically uh, send those. Um, uh, to people sometime. <laughs> uh, but uh, which which scene was that, Deborah? Anyways, honored that it went into the frame too. Thanks so much. Um. Oh, stamps on blocks. You're a longtime stamper, Deborah. If you have them on wooden blocks, I don't know when did when did everything switch over to um, unmounted stamps? Gosh, has it been fifteen years or so? I don't know. There there were still a lot of wood mounted stamps out there, but um, I'd say 10 years ago, there were, you know, um, stores were still, you know, when the stores were around, stores like carrying wood mounted stamps. Anyways, I'm just going in here with some gray. I, you know, I would typically color it that with the same tones of the um, sunset, but I just want to make a little bit of a contrast here. Maybe I'll go with a little bit of violet right here. And that's one of the good things about the, um, the pens is that you can kind of go with these I, the thing I like about these pens too is that you can have there's so many really light values of pen colors these days. Okay, where um, there were pastels in the water-based pens, the watercolors, but I just find that um, I don't know for some reason the alcohol pen world. I don't know. They're just much more. Uh, I don't know, available, you know, I mean, they come in like those multi-packs. And for me, I'm not going for super vibrancy with my pens. So I often just like to layer um, kind of the more pastel, lighter values down, like something like the 20% values and down on all of these different pens. And plus the alcohol pens aren't going to smear uh, the, um, uh, the dye-based ink impressions, you know, because of that alcohol um, water-based dynamic. So anyways, a little bit of purple in that uh, lighthouse structure there. You notice I'm kind of retaining those light areas of the uh, structure as well. And th that'll be fun to kind of play around with with the white pigment ink, okay? Make it look a little bit more textural and whatnot. Let's see. Jason, you do the both the alcohol and watercolor pens. Excellent, excellent. Um, ah, the elk on the hill. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Ruben's joking around. 
what Ruben and I would talk about, um, you know, when a show was coming up was, uh, hello, hello, Julie in Ohio. Good to see you. We were just talking about Ohio and going to the Cincinnati and uh, Akron, Ohio rubber stamp conventions. Uh, yeah, Ruben and I always talk about, like, um, where are we going to go eat? Like, before we took off, we'd get our, um, kind of our restaurant kind of, uh, um, organized before the trips or whatever. Or, I don't know, we had a kind of a routine once we found a good place to eat at these shows. If we were doing them year after year, that's where we'd always go, typically. Um, yeah. I think we can probably still name all of them, too. Um, okay, I, I'm trying to think of what else I want to do here. When do you know when to quit with your coloring? Um, oftentimes, it is when I get to black. <laughs> There's just no... You can't go any farther with that. Now, if I wanted to put some kind of like negative um, uh, impression across there, like a reverse impression, like white on dark, we can do something like that. Maybe, I don't know, that would be perfect up there for some kind of word stamp. Hello, Genie. Good to see you. I put Genie to sleep the other night when I logged on really late uh, with my monotone voice and what delivery. Uh, she couldn't, she couldn't stay awake. And I say, hey, you know, like I said uh, to other people before, if it helps you fall asleep, then that's fine. That's better than taking some kind of sleeping pill. Some, someone um, that has a hard time sleeping, I always kind of remember that uh, comment by them. Um, in a good way, not, not as an insulting way, but uh, yeah, they just kind of put one of my video um, videos on a play. I don't know, probably with their iPad or something like that. And it, uh, it lulled it, you know, it puts them to, puts them to sleep. <laughs> I love that. Uh, you met at the Akron show. Awesome, Julie. Yeah, that w we always enjoyed doing that Akron show. That was always one of the that was one of the better shows on the circuit in terms of uh, just the energy of that crowd. My gosh, you know that was uh, always a great show to do. Um, yeah, always enjoyed that one. All right, so uh, going back to. Um, the uh, the retention of some white in there, if that represents white light, okay, or the source of light, then the reflected light that I'm adding into these things, you know, so if you're putting this white on objects, you're saying that the light on those objects is kind of a reflection of the light that's being, uh, you know, uh, cast upon them by your source. So anyways, as long as you keep a little bit of white in there, it, it makes sense, okay? in terms of your usage at this point in the process right here. Yeah, Jason was saying that he, when he uses the gel pen, that's close to the end. And that's the same thing for me. It's putting on those kind of the, what what really is kind of a three-dimensional type of um, addition to a piece, you know, because, you know, these acrylic paint pens or stuff like that, it's, you know, it's a little bit raised. Hello, PJB Stamper, good to see you. Um, yeah, like embossing or something like that, which I'm starting to do a little bit these days. Which is a lot more than I've done in the past because I didn't do any. But anyways, you see that kind of texturing happening in there? I happen to think it looks a lot more three-dimensional this way. You know, we're dealing with two-dimensional surface, but we're dealing, you know, what we're trying to do, oftentimes, not all the time, in scenes, but uh, usually we're creating some depth and you can create that through the use of imagery, but you can also create it with the use of, you know, this kind of this um, uh, addition of reflected light like that. So again, I, I think that from a textural standpoint, the clouds themselves look soft, okay, but I just think it looks so much softer when you add stuff like this on there. And it's a really thin application of it, okay? It's not like some kind of like a, you know, big blobbed up paint or something like that. So just be careful about something like that. Oh, you just finished your crab cake. Awesome. Let me see, were those, they, those were the baked ones, right? Baked. 
Do you always bake? Can you show the white at the top you were discussing as well? Let me see. The white at the top? Which one, Lynn? That would be a good Mother's Day gift for yourself, Beverly. All right. So see that? That kind of airy lighting that's happening up there. Hello, not afraid of color. Good to see you. Thanks for uh, thanks for logging in. We're kind of doing some finishing touches on this piece right here. I was just mentioning kind of the airiness and the textural kind of range you can create with a little bit of a of a white pigment ink, especially if you've retained some of the white in there. Um, yeah, Janet Winkle is awesome. Yeah, Janet is one of the most experienced um, practitioners and you know innovators, etc., using Stampscape stamps. So, um, awesome, awesome pieces. I've known Janet going back years. She was kind of the in-house teacher for. Um, I don't know if, I think it was the largest scrapbook store in the country or something like that. It was in uh, Tennessee. And uh, she taught there um, for years and years. Um, she was kind of the Stampscape specialist there for a really long time. So um, I don't, I, I think that store closed. But she's been teaching over at Cincinnati. I don't know how many years it's been. It's been quite a few. Okay, so I'm adding some of that mist down here. Let me do a little bit of a close-up right here. Do I teach classes? Yeah, on the workshop section um, of the Stampscapes website, you'll find um, some different classes. I just started doing them because I just got uh, Zoom set up and stuff. As a matter of fact, speaking of Zoom, if Ruben's still on the uh, chat here, he's the one that taught me how to use Zoom because he, uh, he's a teacher and he's done like, I don't know, I don't know how many he did. He's like, when he was teaching me, uh, he said he's now done like a thousand Zoom sessions or something like that. So he knew, he knew that back and forth. So thank you, Ruben, for, uh, for, the, for, the, for the Zoom workshop for me. But yeah, I'm teach I teach, uh, there's like Stampscapes 1 through 5, and um, it is is, uh, you know, beginning Stampscapes. Stampscapes 2 is about depth. Then we'll do a sky one, foil, and then little embellishments like this um, uh, with white pigment inks, highlighting, all those little extra things that I think really, they can be real subtle kind of applications of um, media, but they can make a really big impact um, to the overall, okay? So anyways, yeah, from a textual standpoint, you know, see how everything's getting kind of soft in here from a textual standpoint? But then what I do is I do that splatter painting in here, or we use the white paint pen, something like that. And um, you can bring the, the crisp element of light back into it, okay? Now you see these little kind of light um, windows right in here, or the light itself. And I'll just take a cotton ball like this and see around these windows like this if you just kind of put a little bit of pigment ink like that I don't know can you see it on the video here the stream or right, some of you might want be watching on like a phone where you can't see this too much but see those windows now how kind of soft they're looking like that but what that does is it represents like fog or moisture in the air so when you do something like that you're putting something that represents something in between your eye and that lighthouse right there. So I think it just becomes kind of a more kinesthetic type of um, visual like that, uh, you know, where you can kind of feel um, the setting itself, okay? All right, now this is a lighthouse, so if we wanna add in like a beam, we can do that. There's not very much space on this um, uh, bookmark format here. So this was a, this was a piece of scrap paper that I that I just made into a bookmark. 
Uh, but let's go with this beam here. I'm kind of going about like so, okay? And I'll add this down. I'll add a little bit more pigment ink right around the light itself, okay? Now, we won't be able to see too much of this. It's going to be very subtle because I'm adding white over a very light area, but where we add it over the clouds right in here, maybe we'll be able to see it. Um, the rest of it will be very, very subtle like this, okay? And you can put it right over the light too, you know? You're putting that kind of that strong light right in that space right there, okay? See that? You zoom out like that. I mean, it's very, very subtle. I, I mean, I, I probably, you know, benefit from going a little bit more um, with opacity on it, but I think that's fine as is. All right, so let's have some fun here, okay? Um, I just, where did my toothbrush go? I just rinsed it out and it's always right. You guys probably see it. It's probably right on the screen somewhere. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh, where did it go? I might be using a different brush here. Where did it go? Huh. Well, here's my uh, bleed proof white. I might be using a different brush here. Okay, uh, let me try this one right here. A toothbrush is better for this. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, it's signed and dated 1997. Wow, that's going back, Deborah. That's been that's when that's when conventions and things like that were probably uh, right at the peak of that time. Boy, there were a lot of conventions all over the country at that point in time. Yeah, uh, thanks for dropping in, PJB Stamper. Have a great rest of weekend. And night. Have fun with the family time there. Okay, so mixing up my bleed proof white. Where the heck did my uh toothbrush go it's my it's my go-to brush for a splatter painting see as soon as i you know log off of this video it's going to be oh it's right here it's right right in front of my face anyway okay let me try this right here okay so when you do splatter painting like this um i that's exactly right. It's usually like underneath a stamp or something like that. Uh, not only it, not even two feet from me. It's usually like, you know, ten inches from me. Right, <laughs> you're right. If it's a, uh, if you can find everything, then you know, I don't know, the the environment's a little bit too sterile or something like that. Oh, uh, Sherry, um, I, this, I did this scene in a different video. Um, it was a, uh, um, a stamp sketch video, a live stream, <clears throat> but it is one cloud, two flock, three lighthouse, and four <clears throat> stamps for those, uh, rocks down here. So four stamps. Okay. Anytime you do the splatter painting thing, if you haven't done it before, especially, um, kind of test it out on a piece. Sorry, I'm, a, I'm all out of, I'm a, let me see. There we go. Okay. All right. Let me get this out. Of, I don't know which way it's going to splatter a lot of times. So, all right, let me see. This might not work here. I might have to get up and go find that toothbrush here. Let me try this one. This one's a lot, lot bigger right here. And don't take, don't get too much uh, paint, okay? Uh, some people used to take a, like a correctional pen too, and they used to um, splatter that way, okay? 
I, I think they used to just shake it like that or something. So you can do all kinds of things. Okay, so see this right here? Okay, that's working. Let's see. Let me see if you can see it right here. See this right here? Like that. Like that. Okay. All right. All right. So, okay, one of the things I was mentioning early in this video is there are splashing waves in the design itself, okay? But inevitably, they get, a lot of those splashes get colored. So we have red splashes, brown splashes, yellow splashes, all in this area right here, okay? But it's fun to go back in and reiterate this. And what this does, is it, cre it creates a little bit more depth uh, within a very subtle texture, okay? It's just these little splashing kind of, little dots of, you know, white paint. Okay, now you can add these in with a white paint pen or gel pen or something like that too. Um, this is, you get a lot more of the kind of random kind of uh, array of uh, white down here when you do something like this though, right? And oftentimes, um, let me get a little bit more. I want to concentrate some in that light area if I can. I have a little bit of an easier time with that toothbrush because I've been using that one for years. This one I'm doing like today. <laughs> but let me try to get more of it right in here, okay? So I don't, I don't, I never know what direction the splatter is going to go. Sometimes I go with the toothbrush and it's going over here and then I, the next time it's going over here. I don't know why. All right. <clears throat> I think that'll do it. I'm going to put a little bit up here too, just as a, it's not supposed to be splashing waves or anything like water up there, but I just, it's just putting a little bit of subtle texture in here, like this kind of explosion of light happening. All right, let me see if you can see this at all. Oops, sorry, I'm working a little bit off screen, but see those little patterns like that. It creates a lot of contrast in these areas. See this right here? I think that looks really good in terms of um, kind of a, a textural contrast. You know what I was saying when I added that white in there? It's all kind of soft. We have this kind of soft element in here. And you can create a crisp element with something like that simple application of that. Now, what I'm going to do now is because sometimes I get some variation. It just depends on your ink and your splattering in here. But... Um, I hear you, Phyllis, yeah. No matter how cleared or cluttered, yeah. Um, it's hard to find those things, so. All right, let's see. All right, so let's see here. Sometimes I get variation in sizes of dots, but this time I didn't. So you just go back in with these little white paint pen like this, and see, I add more of it in the lighter area, right? Because that's the area that's becoming illuminated and you can see like a reflected little dot, right? And then as I move away from it, I just kind of, you know, it's a little bit of a sparser application. So it's like condensed in the light because it's white and farther away. It's just kind of isolated like that too. All right, so here, let me put, a, I'm gonna put some in some of these darker areas just so you can see it a little bit more. See this right here? But doesn't that give kind of this bottom area some motion, I guess you can say. Let me see, let me condense it a little bit more right around the uh, splashing area, like so. And then as it moves away, um, the distance between the dots gets a little bit more spread out all right, so there, that is that. Um, let's put some, I don't know what it would be. I guess some sea grass or something like that in the foreground. I wanna get a little bit darker down here. Okay, now, um, who asked me about the glossy? Okay, so like glossy cardstock, there are certain things you can get from that. But I'm working on, this one happens to be working on the, if, you, if you're just logged in, it this is the 
kind of more um, duller white coated silk. Okay, so if I want to use um, Versifying Claire, everyone know about Versifying Claire here and how dark and crisp, you know, crisp it is with your impressions. That just will never dry on non-porous or less porous surfaces. So on this paper right here, because it's more uh, matte in nature, okay, um, this Versifying clear will dry on here with no problem whatsoever, okay? So adding it in like this, and let's put this, we'll see with some little bit of a shoreline texture or whatnot, okay? Foreground brings a little bit of depth into the scene like that, okay? Uh, sorry. There we go, like that. So again, you have this area in here. You're playing with textures. It was a very crisp impression. You know, we toned it all in. We kind of made it a little bit softer. We made it a little bit crisper around in here with little splashing little waves. And then you can put something like this foreground in there where it's another crisp texture. So you get these, you're kind of playing back and forth between things like light and dark, soft and crisp, things like that. You're playing contrast against one another, okay? So for me, things looked, I like that soft element down there, but it kind of got a little bit too soft in areas. So in scenic stamping, you can always just add on another layer of something, which is really cool about scenic stamping. I just did that video yesterday of, uh, you know, taking a an extreme version of a, kind of a, I don't know, scene, I don't know, kind of remedy techniques, but I just did it with that completely throwaway piece of um, demonstration, um, a demonstration card where I was just showing people how, what not to do with actually this reed stamp right here and, uh, you know, made it into a scene. You can always cover things up with another layer of something, um, additional colors, additional textures, whatever. It's just so, I don't know, malleable and uh, forgiving that way. Okay, so I'm just adding this in. This is kind of keeping a little bit of movement going this way. We have this light going off this way and we have these images coming in this way and from this side like that. I'm still thinking about maybe a word stamp up here. I think that might be cool. Um, not sure though yet. Um, hmm. Let me see something. Dusk. Oh, I was going to mat this off in a uh, in a white piece of paper, but I have it ready to go right here. This is what this would look like formatted, by the way. See, my fingers are all kind of inky right now, so I'll show you what this would look like right this. Okay, like that, and then. Like that. How does that look? Okay, but I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to add another matte layer, mounting layer, whatever, around on the perimeter that's um, a star dream kind of brushed gold around on this right here, or on the outside of this white. And I think I'm going to stamp out this word stamp. It just says dusk, okay? And I'm going to do this one in a brilliance gold, okay? Because that brilliance gold I found the other day matches really well with the star dream um, paper like that. So this it'll be like this around on the edge right there. A little, you know, a little bit of a thicker layer than that white right there. 
Okay, I can't do it in this video right now because I stamped the clear that that clear is going to take, I don't know, for me, it's going to, it takes overnight. It's going to have to dry overnight. Okay, I really want to see it now though, but, uh, and I could heat set this, but I don't know. I like to let it air dry as a preference. Um, and I should probably spray seal. So it's going back to spray sealing. Someone asked me about spray sealing. Um, I want to I want to spray seal this before I uh, end up formatted in an into a card like this. So, yeah. All right. Let me see. Let me get that out of the way there. Otherwise, I'm going to get gold and whatever all over that piece of white there. All right. So let's see. My brilliance gold is always drying out really fast here. Gosh, I just used it the other day and I think it it was fine then. I might have to apply some more pigment. All right. Let's go with a little bit more gold here. This pig, this Brilliance Pigment Ink, it, not all of them are the same. Um, they act differently from one another. I was mentioning in another video, even the gold, um, the gold uh, seems a little bit different in viscosity than the silver one and definitely very different from the white and the black. And then it's almost like different chemistries to them. So, all right, let's see here. All right, now I just re-inked this, so I'm just checking in here to make sure that it's evenly inked. Okay, and not over, let me do a test print. All right. This lettering right here, lettering right here is fairly bold with a lot of space in between, so I don't have to worry about it too much. But if you're doing something like a quote stamp with a lot of tight text, be careful about your um, your uh, use of a thick media like pigment ink. Uh, Deborah, thanks for joining in. She's probably already taken off here. Good to see you. Okay, let me try to get this as straight as I can. Sorry about my head getting in the way of the camera. Let me see here. All right. Every time I'm doing one of these, just kind of eyeballing it. I'm hoping eh, it's a little bit crooked, but not too bad. So dusk right there. So anyways, that color right there really matches well, don't you think, with the um, Star Dream, uh, the uh, iridescent, you know, kind of a brushed looking uh, look of that. So that, I think that's going to be a nice pairing right there. So anyway, let's let's get kind of a little bit of a gist of the, the combination of uh, mounting here. So it's going to look like that. This isn't the piece of paper I'm using. It's too small for this one, but I'll use another one. So it'll be about like that. I usually go with a real thin um, white border to kind of mimic the uh, the highlighting, those little dots. Okay, they're, they're really thin. So it's going to look something like that. And then this is just a piece of matte, uh, black right here. So it'll look something like that, I think. So I think that'll make a pretty nice little bookmark, huh? Oops, sorry. Focusing issues there. Anyway, so that's that. All right, that was a lot of coloring everything to, to kind of show this kind of little splattering type of thing going on down here. But see how active that is down there? It's active in terms of the splatter painting, you know, just the very nature of splattering it like that. We do have kind of the, uh, you know, the really you know, hand applied dots in there for variation too, but it just kind of brings that area to life and, uh, I don't know, brings a little bit of a uh, kind of visual motion into the piece and energy, I guess you can say, especially down in those crashing wave areas. And, uh, you know, to an otherwise, I think it's kind of a real calm scene, but in these areas right down here, it doesn't make it loud or anything like that, but it just brings a little bit of energy into those spaces like that. And even that um, little splashing of those little dots up here, see from a textural standpoint, you know what I mean? 
just having that little bit of added texture up there, it gives it a little bit of extra depth, I think. So little things like that are really fun things to add in there. I mean, you can't even see those um, little dots at this distance like that. You know, people would be looking at your card, you know, like at this type of distance right here, these little dots like that. But, you know, with the um, zooming in, you know, closer up viewing of it, you know, when people are looking at your pieces, there's these all these little things like that, even if they're not thinking, oh, here's a bunch of little dots up there. We're giving them a little bit of extra contrast in those areas. So, yeah. Lord of the Rings. I love Lord of the Rings. Okay, so that is that. I'm looking for, really looking forward to getting this um, spray sealed. Okay, I don't know if you can tell, but the colors on here from earlier in the video, they have dulled out, oh, I don't know, I'd say 20, 30% as they're drying, okay? But you spray seal this and it will bring back that um, kind of that wet, vibrant, um, fully saturated look uh, that, you know, that we saw when it was freshly applied, okay? And uh, I don't know, for me, I'm kind of wondering if I'll do this, if I'll spray seal it in the matte or glossy now. I'm not quite sure. Like I said, if you spray this with glossy and you just give it a quick coat, it doesn't look glossy. It's just a little bit more satiny or whatnot. Or if I should spray it with the, uh, the, um, the workable fixative, okay? Which will retain more of a matte look, but you get the, re uh, the vibrancy of the colors, though, at the same time, you know. Um, and like I said, you know, if you have something like a hairspray or something like that, that'll do too. Um, um, polyurethanes, things like that, you know, that kind of are meant more towards furniture. I've seen that used. Those are a little bit thick though, so if you spray it with one of those types of sprays or like a Carline Triple Thick, just be conscious of the the dripping aspect of it I, those some of the types of sprays out there are really thick so it's easy to get build up you know occurring on on your surface like that so the thicker the spray um kind of the farther um distance you keep from your surface area when you're spraying okay and always spray outside don't breathe any of that in there so um does anyone ever say I'm the Bob Ross of stamping? Only with my hair, I think, when it comes to that. <laughs> I'm joking, folks. Uh, but yeah, I have heard that. Um, yeah, I used to watch that guy periodically when I was a kid. Uh, PBS, right? Um, let's see. Happy little specks, exactly. Little specks of light in, in the scene, kind of... Uh, bring it to life um laminating with the not glossy pouches oh i i haven't laminated a piece in a long long time you could you know there's cold laminating there i have a laminating machine too yeah you know what? that'd be a good idea actually i would get this mounted up like yeah like this and throw it, you know, I could put it through the laminator, especially if it's a bookmark. That's a really good idea. The one thing about this, though, there's so many layers like that. Sometimes when I do that hot lamination, you get that kind of space in between um, where it didn't kind of fully seal. So I don't know what the amount of layers. There's going to be four layers on here. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think I might try that. That's a, that's a good, that's a good, uh, where did I put my spray? Oh, here. I spray with this typically. Um, who just asked that right there? Oh, Darlene asked. So the UV resistant clear, and it comes in gloss or matte, but the matte that I usually use is just a um, workable fixative. So it seals, you know what I mean? And uh, the workable fixatives too are pretty nice because they dry so fast because, you know, when people are using the workable fixative, um, they're typically working on the piece. They want to get back to it right away. So, you know, the nice thing about those is it just dry, like dries in an instant. Almost when it hits it, it just uh, does that. So, um, Kumar. Kumar? What's that? When I, think, when I see Kumar, I'm thinking the varnish or something like that. 
Um, is that the varnish you're, you're talking about? I haven't used that before, if that's the case. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, bookmark, and it'll actually really protect it. So, I mean, it's one example of a stamped piece being utilized and handled a lot, right? So I, that would make sense to throw the uh, the bookmarks through a laminator. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, you know what? I wonder how the laminator would um, affect the metallic uh, ink. Okay, so this ink is water-based. I think if it's a gold oil-based ink, with that heat being applied with that pressure on that, it could squish it out. But being the fact that this brilliance is water-based, it might be okay. I don't know, I'll give it a try. And we'll see uh, if that works or if it affects anything. So, um, hmm. If you cut another piece of paper the same size as that and put it behind, then only the front laminates. You can trim right to the edge. That's a good tip. I haven't used my laminators in quite some time, but we'll give it a try. Yeah, I'm worried about the mushing. <laughs> uh, hmm. But might as well give it a try, right? As my beginning painting teacher always used to remind us all the time in class it's not precious so um yeah that's a good idea just lynn just do a, a little bit of a test on something maybe i'll send something like this through i'll stamp out uh, something in this actually i should do this before it dries out huh i'll send it through on this one too because if it if it doesn't mush on the glossy, I don't think it's going to mush on the uh, the matte at all. But of course, um, the bookmark is going to be much thicker than just one piece of this paper, so that might come into play as well. I have a feeling the Brilliance is going to do okay, though, just for the fact that it's um, a water-based ink and not oil. I, I just think that, that this my machine gets really hot, and... Um, I just think that oil can potentially go back into solution. Um, maybe, maybe not on this type of paper, though. A lot of that oil is being absorbed into the surface of the uh, paper, so maybe not. I don't know. I'll test it on this piece. I'll just cut this little piece off right here and see how it does. So, um, yeah. All right, so that is it. Thanks. Uh, for everyone for uh, logging on. I hope everyone's having a nice weekend and I uh, hope you're having some time to uh, stamp or do some creative things and have some fun. Uh, for all the moms out there, like I said earlier, happy Mother's Day. If you're grandmothers, if you're mothers to other creatures or even your just your artwork, you know, hope you have a really nice day tomorrow and whatnot. And uh, yeah, thanks again for logging in and checking out the, uh, oh, what should we call this? Dusk at the Lighthouse or something like that. Um, I don't know, something of that sort. <laughs> That's the way I come up with my titles for my pieces. I don't know. And I need to go find my, uh, my, my beloved splatter painting toothbrush. Where did it go? I just washed it out for this video. So I don't know, maybe it's... I don't know, maybe I set it down or something like that. But, okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Darlene. Not afraid of color. Terry, Beth, thank you. thanks, everyone, for uh, checking it out, Sherry. And, uh, yeah, thanks so much for uh, checking out the videos and whatnot. If you uh, got notification of that for subscribing and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, I'll get this formatted and... and uh, I'll show you what it looks like on a future video. Or if you're on Instagram, I always add those to that or um, Facebook posts or whatnot. I think this will look really good when it's spray sealed with the uh, with the three layers of matte and uh, potential um, lamination. But that was a great idea with the lamination. I have so many lamination um, sleeves that uh, I don't really do a lot of laminating anymore. So yeah. All right, Sherry, Jeannie, uh, Phyllis, everyone, logging off.
have a great rest of evening or morning or day wherever you're at and uh, hopefully we'll see you on a future live stream these are really fun and uh yeah i don't know thank you guys also for the uh the ideas and tips and whatnot always good to see so always good to see you or, or to, always good to read you right lucy good to see you thanks again cheryl and uh let's see 7 13 i think we're going out to dinner tonight for uh mother's day because tomorrow's so crowded <laughs> we'll see you beverly have a good one logging out folks <laughs>